Amen. Well, let's stand this lovely morning, this lovely cold morning, and sing 456. To start our service, we're going to sing, To God be the glory, great things he hath done. Let's sing. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of god the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from jesus a pardon receives praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice to come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. All right, sing it out on the last. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. Good start to our service. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to be here. Glad that you're here. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Father, thank you that we can assemble together. Lord, we truly miss it when we cannot. I pray, Lord, you'll meet with us once again. Thank you, Lord, for uh, last Sunday's services and all that went on, Lord. Thank you for how you've met with us. And I pray once again that you'll do it once again today. In Jesus' name, I ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. Let's open our hymn books one more time to him. And under one number, 191, count your blessings. We're going to sing all four of Count Your Blessings. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, When you are discouraged thinking all is lost, Count your many blessings, name them one by one, And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. 
Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, Think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven nor your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done on the last. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Amen. And now listen, as the choir sings, love brought me back home.
let's stand one more time to sing hymn number 23. Hymn number 23, let's welcome each other to the house of the Lord today. <clears throat> Shake a hand, give a hug, and let's singing the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. Let's shake a hand. Let's give a hug to the people around us. All right, let's find our place and let's sing uh, the chorus one more time for the family of God. Let's sing. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join tears with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You may have a seat. Well, hello, everyone. It is good to be with you today and hope you're doing well. And thank you so much for many of you praying and sending cards. And uh, I am doing much better. Praise the Lord. So. Uh, it's good to, it's good to be a thank brother uh, brother Bruce and brother Jack for filling in and brother Miguel for filling in appreciate it very much and uh, uh, it's something I don't like to do as far as getting sick and looking at other people doing my job but uh, but I do appreciate that they're here and, and they, they can do it so amen ushers let's go ahead and come uh, this morning we're going to take an offering <clears throat> All right. Uh, Brother Tim, would you mind leading the word of prayer? Amen. God bless you this morning as you give. You never change. You are the God you say you are. When I'm afraid, you come and still my beating heart. 
you stay the same when hope is just a distant thought you take my pain and you lead me to the cross what love is this that you Thank you, Megan. Well, good morning, everyone. If you would take your Bible this morning and turn to the book of Matthew, please. Matthew chapter 20, I believe. Matthew chapter 20. Would you, if you're able to, would you please stand? And <clears throat> I'm just going to read uh, just a, a small, smaller passage of scripture. Matthew chapter 20, look at verse 20, please. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. 
And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the example that we have before us. And Lord, I pray that you would have your will in our lives. Dear God, help us to remain humble in thy sight. And Lord, may we get this right. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'm looking forward to next Sunday morning. We will have uh, the uh, Weber family with us. And um, they are here on furlough for a while, for a year at least. And, uh, and so they actually don't live very far from, from here. They live in Whiteland. And so, so they'll be with us this coming Sunday morning, which, by the way, is the last Sunday of the month. And normally the last Sunday of the month, we are preaching on a disciple. Well, since that's not the case, we're going to do it today. This morning, we have uh, a disciple of Christ, and he is the son of Zebedee. Actually, he, he and his brother are referenced that way in the scriptures, and the disciple that, we're, what, that we are referring to, his brother's name is John. He's also the son of Zebedee. And they have a mother, and her name is Salome. And by the way, she is the one that goes to Jesus. She is an aunt of Jesus Christ. Quite interesting, isn't it? You know, we, we really don't necessarily look at Jesus with brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and cousins and all of that, but he did have those. And uh, we find, though, that the disciple that we're speaking of today is James. He is, he is our disciple, and we find him focused here uh, with along with his brother, But to give you a little bit of history concerning James, James, and please don't get me wrong, there actually are three Jameses mentioned in the Word of God. James, the our James that we're referring to today, the son of Zebedee. But then there's also James, the son of Alphaeus. And... uh, And then also there is another James, the brother of our Lord. And he's also the one that authored the book of James. And so, but this morning we're looking at uh, the disciple in title are called James. Now, he has other titles as well as others have referred to him as Uh, James the Elder, 
because he is the older brother. Uh, and uh, the other James, James Alpha, is, is referred to as the lesser uh, because uh, of uh, just trying to make them distinguished. But, uh, you know, James, James was included in the close-knit group along with uh, the other disciples that uh, John and Peter. These men were, these three disciples were a part of a close-knit group. They were one of the, the first disciples chosen. But we also find that these three, James was included... They were invited by Jesus on three different occasions where the others were not. One of them was at the scene of the raising of the daughter of, of Jairus from the dead. These three disciples were a part of that. They got to witness that. But not only that, the transfiguration. These disciples were a part of that and getting to see that. But not only that, James, along with the other two, the, they were also invited in the Garden of Gethsemane to witness the agony of Jesus and what was going on there. And so, so James was included in this uh, sort of... Uh, 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 group that uh, was quite close to the Lord. But not only that, we know based upon what the Bible says and when, when they were called into the ministry that he and his brother, James and his brother John were fishermen in Galilee and they left their father and followed Jesus as the Bible puts it immediately. That's what these guys did. And so they also were fishermen. We also find that um, James, listen carefully, James was the first of the disciples that was martyred for Christ. In Acts chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, we have that account. James's zeal for, zeal for Jesus resulted in in him being the first martyr for Christ as far as one of the 12. But not only that, according to what the Bible says, he was killed with the sword on order of King Herod Agrippa I of Judea. And so James had a zeal for, for the Lord. He he had a, he had a, a, a passion for, for uh, uh, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Without a doubt, he had a, he had a uh, uh, what, what one may call it, uh, a hunger, a, a, a desire for, for service. He really did. An interesting note, there was a particular village that... Uh, rejected Jesus. And James and John were there and they asked Jesus, would you like for us to call down fire from heaven on this village? Literally, that's what they asked Jesus. Of course, Jesus said no. But because of that, they got the name Sons of Thunder. That's right. Sons of thunder, because they were so gung-ho about the Lord and serving the Lord and, and uh, really coming across as quite hard at times. But James, we find an account here. This is where our message will come from today. We find that James and his brother... Apparently, according to our text, I don't know if it's because they were related to Christ. 
I don't know if they were, they were a part of the inner circle and, and they had done a lot for the Lord. They, 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 they were, uh, you know, good servants. But for somewhere, somewhere, some reason for, along the line, they, uh, apparently they wanted some recognition. They wanted some position. And so, uh, who else better would maybe the Lord listen to than their mother? And so, apparently, it was the mother that went to Jesus and requested something. Obviously, she was requested for their son, for, for her sons. And uh, yet, yet, one might think, well, did that actually come from the mother or did it come from the sons. Well, it is my opinion it came from the sons because it wasn't the mother that the gang was mad at. It was the sons. We'll, we'll talk about that here in just a moment. But we find that, that, that the request was simply this, and we read it to you just, just a while ago. That was this. Lord, would you allow my sons to, to sit next to you? In the kingdom. I mean, this is a pretty important position. I mean, you know, we, you know, they apparently she thought they deserved it, and uh, and so how about on the right hand or on the left hand? That'll be fine. You know, we all know that according to our text, that didn't go over well. First of all, Jesus said, I, I have no authority to even grant that. Only my Father in heaven can do that. And that's apparently already prepared for someone else. But you know, if you and I are not careful, we may get it into to our minds that, you know what? I deserve a position. If you and I are not careful, we, we actually might think, you know what, I've been doing this a while, or you know what, I do this better than anybody, and I deserve some recognition. I, I deserve some, maybe some power, some authority. And if you and I are not careful, we'll actually think we're better than we really are. You know, I'm so very thankful for people that serve the Lord and they don't need applause. They don't need a pat on the back. But boy, you can count on them day in and day out. They're just, they're just simply serving the Lord. They don't need the recognition. Though I might say they, they may deserve it. But you never hear it from them. Somehow or another, we, we, we can actually get to the point where, you know what? You know, I think people should treat me differently because... Well, look what I've been doing. Well, you know, I've been, I've been serving the Lord at that particular church for so long, and you know what? I deserve something more. You know, I, I, I've, I've known a lot of people that have developed that attitude. And sadly enough, they are no longer serving the Lord at all. You know how come? Because they got hurt. Maybe people didn't recognize them like they wanted them to. And sadly enough, they just quit. They just quit. My friend this morning, you know, if there's anything that we can learn from James here and his son John and or their brother John, if you and I are not careful, we'll also be tempted to ask of something that we really have no business asking for. Well, we find, as you know the answer, Jesus said, I, I, I can't even grant you that. But I want you to listen, because we did not read it. But what, what Jesus did say, and, I, and, and, I, and I, I did read it. Let me read it to you again. Look at verse 23. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. In other words, Jesus reminded them, yes, 
there are certain things that you will be able to do like me and with me. And one of the things that is made reference to is the death that, John would, uh, that James would die. The suffering that, that, that no doubt goes along with it. And I tell you, we do know according to James, according to what the Bible says in Acts chapter 12 verses 1 and 2, that James was martyred for the cause of Christ. And, and gave his life for that. But the Bible goes on and says this, though. Look at verse 24. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. They were upset with what was asked. They were not pleased with James and John. Things were not going too well right now. I don't know if it, if, if, if it was because, wait a minute, we serve the Lord just as much as you do. I mean, why is it that you're doing this? And in either case, it did not go well with the crew. It did not go well with everyone else. And the Bible says it like this, but Jesus called them unto him and said, you know, isn't it just like the Lord? Oh, this is a great opportunity. Because right now the disciples are not, not very happy with each other. They're mad at each other. Can you just imagine being a part of that group and, and Jesus is there and Jesus knowing that, boy, they're fighting again. By the way, you know, Christians do fight one another. We don't always get along with one another, right? But can I tell you, if you would listen to Jesus, listen carefully. You and I, if we would listen to Jesus, we would learn to stop fighting one another. If we would just listen to Jesus. Now, I've, I've, I've known a lot of Christians that would never listen to Jesus and it just kept going on and on and on and the fighting got worse until you know what happened? Boy, they just disbanded. They just left. And that's sad. It's a sad testimony for a church when we, when we, when we listen more to our own heart instead of listening to Jesus. Well, Jesus took this opportunity to, hey, here is something that the disciples can learn. And so listen to what the Bible says. But Jesus called them unto him and said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority upon them. In other words, Jesus reminds the disciples of, of, of the Gentiles and their authority and, and sadly enough, isn't this what we think? Boy, those that are in charge, those that has the position, they're the ones that have the authority and they can tell everybody else what to do. And somehow or another we think that, that's success. Boy, we have arrived, haven't we? Boy, when I'm in charge and you guys do everything that uh, I tell you, that means I am successful. Well, apparently Jesus had another ideal about success but sadly these men apparently they were thinking oh I tell you if, if only if I was in charge or boy I tell you then I would be then I would really be successful and boy then I would be able to tell everybody what to do and I would be great right Jesus comes along oh by the way it doesn't make any difference who you are it doesn't make any difference how old you are, how young you are. All of us should be able to serve the Lord. All of us. And we find that Jesus, this is what he says. And it's, and it's almost as if, you know, this may have been a revelation for the disciples. Because we at least know two of them believed that, believed that you know, in order to be successful, you got to have power and you got to be in charge. Well, the Bible says in verse 26, 
but it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, you got to be the one in charge, right? Nope. You got to be the one that, that, that tells everybody what to do, right? Nope. According to what the Bible says, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your what? Minister. The word minister there actually means servant. Let him be your minister. Let him be your servant. The Bible goes on and says it like this. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus takes this opportunity amongst the disciples while they were fighting and, and they were angry at each other. And of course it was because of James and John and, and what they did. Boy, if there's anything that you and I can learn though from James and John as well, but James in particular, and that is this. Would to God that we could learn that it isn't about position. It isn't about, you know, everyone uh, clapping me on the back and, and plotting for me. That's not really success. But what is success in the eyes of the Lord is simply learning to be a servant of the Lord and to serve God and to serve people. That's what it's all about. I believe we, you know, if you and I are not careful, we can easily get away from that. Well, we'll just let somebody else do it. We'll let somebody else, uh, uh, you know, tell someone else about Jesus Christ. You know, I, I, I've, done it, I've done it enough. Or, or, you know what, I'm too old to do that anymore. Can I tell you, in order to be successful, at least in the eyes of the Lord, according to what the Bible says, in order to be chief among you, learn to be a servant. Learn to serve the Lord. You know, we're good, are we not, at checking everyone out and making sure they're serving the Lord. We like to do that. Uh, I didn't see you at church last Sunday. Well, I was sick, okay? But you get my point. Hey, you know what? I didn't see you at visitation. I didn't see you when we, we, went, we went on, uh, on, uh, on uh, canvassing. Didn't see you there. Hey, you know what? You can come to, or you can't come to church, but I can see you at Walmart all the time. We can, we can become quite judgmental, can't we? And, it, and it's almost as if that makes us feel what? More spiritual? Makes us feel like we're better than someone else? You know what would be great? You know what would, would be better in the eyes of the Lord for sure? And that is this. If we would just simply focus on serving the Lord. Now, in other words, well, I don't know what you're doing. I, you know, that it's not my job to kind of keep up. I hope, I hope you're serving the Lord. But you know what? I just need to focus on me serving the Lord. Me doing what, what God would have me to do. And to live in such a way that, because if there's anything that we could learn from the life of James, without a doubt, he was, truly was a servant of the Lord. Now, now, he had to learn some things. And, and you and I, we somehow think, well, you know what? I'm the leader of this, or I'm the leader of that, and I've got all the authority. That's really not what Jesus is referring to. The ideal is this. You and I ought to focus on serving the Lord, and as we serve the Lord, we will serve people. And by the way, who's the example of that? According to what the text says, it's the Lord Jesus himself. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to be a ransom for many. Boy, I tell you, I cannot think of any better example of Jesus serving than when he washed the disciples' feet. I mean, can you just imagine that? They, they all gathered together in the house and, and uh, as they were coming in, Guess who had a, had a towel around him? And guess who was kneeling by the basin of water? And, and guess who was, was wiping the disciples' feet? It was Jesus. 
And of course, of course, you know, Peter and what he said, and oh, no, 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 you're not going to wash my feet, and, 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 and rightly so. I mean, out of respect, come on, he's the Lord. By the way, if people respect you, it ought to come from them, not from you. Hey, you ought to respect me, Larry. Can I tell you, that's not how it should be. If Larry respects me, it's it ought to come from him, not from me telling him he ought to respect me. That's his wife's job. No, just kidding. But sadly enough, people, people all around who name the name of Christ, they look around, hey, 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 you should respect me more. Well, maybe they should, but that ought not to come from you. You and I ought to focus simply on what we are to do as far as for serving the Lord and do that to the best of our ability. Because it is God that will say yay or nay to us. It is God that we'll have to give an account to. <laughs> not to me. Thank God, not to me. You know, I am just a servant in the Lord's hand. God has just called me to do this. I'm, I'm serious. God has called me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to be a pastor here in this place. But I am a servant. Oh, I tell you, you know, it, it might get to the point where this church says, you know what, Alan, we don't like, I don't, we don't like your preaching anymore. We, we think you're outdated, you're too, you're too old, you're whatever the case may be. And you know what, that still doesn't change the fact I am a servant of the Lord. And okay, fine, well, I'll just go some other place. But folks, may we learn that we're just servants of the Lord. We're, we're you know, and I, I know we live in a world today where people want to be so great. And they think in order to be great... I've got to attain this amount of money or I've got to be in this position or, I, you know, everybody's got to look up to me. And most people don't get that. I promise you, even though all of us, we like to make more money, it's probably not going to happen for most of us. You know, we, we, we would love to be the one in charge. Can I tell you, most of us won't be in charge. We won't be. I'm sorry, you're not going to make that, uh, uh, you know, $100,000 contract with the basketball in your hand. Most players don't ever make it. Well, then what does that mean? Am I, am I, a, am I a loser? Do I, do I not find happiness in life then? Can I tell you? Success is learning to serve him. And everybody can do that. Success is learning to serve the Lord and serve others. Be a blessing to other people. Help other people. Encourage other people. Boy, that you and I can do. But that will, that will force you to have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Hey, what does it say? And he'll exalt you in due time. But that's up to him, not you and I. Well, we find that Jesus says it like this, and I'll close. And whosoever will be chief among you let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, to serve. That's, he is our example, folks, this morning. He's the one that we are to look to. He's the one. You know, we live in a society today where, boy, it is so motivated by greed and and, and by stepping on someone in order to get to the top. And it is, 
It is a dog-eat world, that is for sure. But folks, may we not lose sight as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. May we learn to humble ourselves. Come on, listen to what I'm saying to you. And let's yield ourselves to the Lord and serve Him. Lord, whatever you would have me to do. But what it means, though, is you're going to have to put your will aside. Because you cannot serve Him and yourself at the same time. But learn to serve the Lord. In other words, that also means that, that not only should I put my will aside, but also, you know what? Things may happen that I may not agree with. How many have ever had that happen? You better believe it. God, wait a minute, I wasn't planning on this, and I don't like this, and, and this is not good, and sometimes we have to swallow our pride, and sometimes we have to accept what God says yes to and we don't like it by the way Paul had to do that that thorn in the flesh he didn't like it he wanted it gone but he changed his attitude and said most gladly therefore will I suffer my friend this morning maybe this morning God's knocking at your heart's door and you've been fighting so hard. And maybe this morning you're going to have to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I'll accept your will. I'll rejoice in what I don't like because it is your will. Because I'm simply a servant, right? I'm a servant and I serve you. I wasn't planning on this. I, I, don't, I don't like this, Lord, but I will yield myself to it because it is your will, not my will. But my friend, most importantly, when you and I serve the Lord, that will mean we will serve people. I don't know about you, but Lord, how in the world am I going to be able to love these people? Right? I mean, the people of this world and, 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 and the people in our lives, I tell you, it's hard to love people. It's hard to kneel down and, and help them and to wash their feet. We don't even think they, they deserve it. And, and good grief, do I have to do that? You know, it's okay if I like the person. It's okay, you know, uh, they, they're nice to me and they do not kind things for me, so I don't mind serving for them. But what about people that you don't like? You get my point? And folks, this world is full of people that may not agree the way you think, may not look the way you think they should look, but they need Jesus. And God wants you to go and serve them. I tell you, how else are we going to do that unless we put our will aside and submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and serve him? And we take our orders from the Lord and our Lord, and our Lord says, you love that person. I don't want to love that person, Lord. But Lord, I will love that person because you want me to. <laughs> now, some of you would rather say to the Lord, Lord, do you want me to rain down fire from heaven on them? That's what we would want, maybe. And that goes along with our will, maybe. Maybe. But the Lord, of course, the Lord says no. He says love them. You know, there are some people that are not ready to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that, don't you? Look at me. 
there are some people that are not ready to receive what you know to be true. We don't quit on them, but we just wait for another opportunity. But folks, we don't quit serving them. We don't. So if there's anything you and I can learn from the disciple James, James the greater, James the son of Zebedee, the brother of John, if there's anything we could learn, may we learn how to be a servant. This world needs Christians that serve the Lord. May we learn that from the James. Let's all stand, every head bowed, every eye closed. I hope and pray this morning, listen carefully, that you're not looking for the applause of men. For some people, though, they need it. They need the likes. They need people to endorse them. They need to be applauded. And I hope and pray that if I'm talking to you this morning, that you will find another answer because you really don't need the praise of men. What you need is the approval of God. And may we as Christians seek God's approval. May we serve him. By the way, that's, that's what is involved when we seek the Lord. When we choose Christ, what we're saying is, Lord, I want your way. And that comes with service. The pianist begins to play this morning. Doesn't make any difference how old we, we, get, we are, we get. We can always serve the Lord. But maybe we've rose to the point where we're, we're better than that. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't do that. No, I don't clean up for people. <laughs> no, they, they clean up for me. No, no, I'm not going to walk across the street and invite someone to church. I mean, that's embarrassing. Come on. Yeah, but what if the Lord asks you to do that? What if... What if that's the only way to, to let them know that the church is in the community and that the church would like to extend an invitation to them? What if that was the way? I may be talking to someone who's caught up in this whole success syndrome and they've always been taught that in order to be successful, You've got to earn a certain amount. You've got to have a certain position or you've got to have the approval of man. I'm here to tell you, that's not success in the eyes of the Lord. It's not. I don't know how God has spoken to your heart this morning, but primarily I've talked to Christians today. But if you're here today and you don't know where you'd spend eternity, the only answer for that is the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray today that you would do a work in our hearts and our lives. Dear God, move us to serve you. Lord, to serve people. Help us to humble ourselves and yield ourselves to you. It's your will that matters, not ours. And so, Lord, help us to be great in that respect. Lord, may your will be done this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Dave leads us in a verse of him. You do what God would have you to do. Come on as we sing. Wandered far, 
away from God. But you know, but now I'm coming home. What about it today? Can God do a work in your life and change how you view things? You know, it's about time the church started being servants instead of sitting at the table. Lord, here am I. Use me. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Look up here at me. I'll close. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the GPS thing. And I, I use it quite often. And... Uh, most of the time, my GPS is correct. Every now and then, I'll talk back to my GPS. You ever done that? And uh, because I know how to go, you know, there's several options. And, and I said, no, 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 we're going to go down here. And so I'm talking to this machine. What if God is the GPS in your life? Who wins? The difference, though, is if, if God is the GPS, he's never wrong. And you know we ought to yield to whatever he says. I hope and pray that you're following the God in your life that knows exactly what you should do. He never makes a mistake. He never does. I hope and pray you'll be back with us again tonight. Looking forward to uh, once again worshiping our Lord. And, uh, but before we're closed today, uh, Brother Tim's got some announcements. Okay. You just remain standing if you would. We'll get through these. Uh, choir practice tonight at 5 p.m. Uh, as the pastor mentioned, services tonight at 6 uh, services on Wednesday at 7, uh, preceded by the Wednesday uh, dinner at 6 p.m. Uh, again, the cost is $5. This week is Chinese. Uh, it says we made $181.25 last Wednesday uh, toward the flooring. And also the Ladies Fellowship uh, group raised $370 toward the flooring at the last ladies me meeting. So uh, all together we've raised over $2,000 since February. So great job so far. Let's just keep uh, building toward that. Uh, Friday, this Friday the 24th, teen bowling, uh, 7 p.m. at Southern Lanes in Franklin. Uh, you need $20. Um, three weeks from now, April 9th, uh, we have Easter Sunday services, of course. Uh, the choir's cantata also will have an Easter egg hunt. Uh, thank you for all those who have helped fill out fill up the Easter eggs, and if you still want to help with something toward that, see Susan. And finally, we have a T-shirt still left in the foyer. Uh, choose Christ, uh, long sleeve T-shirts, twenty dollars, and the fund goes to, uh, the funds go toward the Teen Camp Fund. So help them out if you uh, like to buy them. Uh, give the money to uh, Brother Miguel, Sarah, or Matthew. And if you pay on the app toward that, let Marlia know it's for the teen camp. All right, let's have a word of prayer and be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, we again thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we just pray that you watch over us, keep us safe, uh, bring us back for the service tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.